Wow. God bless you guys. Wow, I'm powerful today. <laughs> hey, um, special thank you to Pastor Josh. You helped us out last week with um, Jim Rennish and uh, Tom. Tom Marco. So we had a, um, a massive power failure um, last week before service, and so we had like one speaker going on, and I think we we're picking up some guy's cam radio station from Bolivia. Um, and so we, we survived it, um, and and uh, had a few guys, um, Tom and Jim, come in and do some um, triage on our soundboard. So thank you as we continue to get our technical stuff back together again. No one ever notices the sound man or sound woman or sound person until something goes wrong, right? <laughs> uh, great sound goes unnoticed. It's just a terrible, so, you know, hero or, or zero, but we've got some heroes, so thanks guys. <laughs> If you have interest in helping with our sound and technological ministry, and you've got a gift, or you you want to learn, and you feel like you've got some good abilities to learn, we are looking for some talk in our, in our technical uh, ministry here at Journey. And um, that was an advertisement for last week. Um, so if you have interest, please talk to Pastor Josh, and, and he'll, uh, he'll work with you on that. Also, very excited today. We've been praying for quite a while about um, getting uh, added additional elders to our elder team here at Jury. And we were looking at a number of uh, men right now um, who uh, are qualified. And the Bible gives real clear direction on how to pray for an elder and how to pick for an elder. And it's a significant role within any church body that has a lot of different functions, mostly servants. And, um, and uh, it's outlined in Timothy and Titus. There's a lot of qualifications for another. And so we just to pray God about who that would be and the who's uh, multiple people. But we have one that we're going to share with you today. And the way that it works is I'm going to share a name with you. And in our Constitution of Bylaws, we give you opportunity as a church body just to um, uh, ask a question if you have one or refer or share a thought um, for a couple weeks or two weeks. So um, uh, I'll share that name right now. And then I'll just ask you to pray for this person, this individual, for their wife and, and their, their family, and just, um, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask them, or, or me or our staff, then feel free, um, but it's good to know those who labor among you, and so I'm excited to share that Bill Mark Portis um, is going to be, uh, we're submitting his name to the church, been doing for well over, uh, kind of all of us, since we were back in the gym here and there, and, and very dedicated for the last few years, his wife Dawn. I, I wrote down all the names of the kids because I forget stuff. I forget my kids' names. So um, they have, <laughs> I do. So they have seven children. Tyler, who just got married um, a few weeks ago. Um, Haley, who just shot the, um, the pictures at uh, our son Luke's wedding. She's a gifted, gifted uh, photographer. Tyler work, um, works and lives with his wife in Georgia. And Haley's out in Colorado. Is that right? Yeah, neither one of them wanted to be a little plus by our, you know, you know, Georgia, you know, mountains of Colorado, you know, plains of Illinois, I don't know. Um, but uh, uh, those are their two older children, Tess, who um, serves and works in our children's ministry, who's just an amazing young lady, Bryce, um, who also helps with our children. You saw them up here uh, playing guitar today. And then Linda, Anya, and Remy, just some great young uh, ladies. But we're excited, and uh, um, I'm not, that's all I'm going to say, Bill, but we're excited to have you. Thank you for your willingness to serve. And, uh, and in two weeks, um, if we feel further, and, which we already do, we're very good about this. Uh, we'll pray over it and off we go on helping us work. So um, thank you for your help. So uh, we're going to jump right into this message. And I'm tempted to say this is the last message in our series of Meet the Holy Spirit, but I'm not because. What we've done is we've cracked and opened the door to something that's going to be a regular um, line of talk and teaching and journey forever. Because um, the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity, right? Um, if you guys remember um, the first week uh, we talked on this series, we talked about how the Holy Spirit um, is not an it. Holy Spirit is a person. He's not the, them, thou, um, it, she, z, or that his pronoun is he. Because he is a person. 
and the third person of the Trinity. We talked about where he resides, so remember this. Teaching from several weeks ago, God is in heaven, and Jesus is at the right hand of God, who's in heaven forever making intercession for all the saints. And the Holy Spirit, or Holy Spirit, resides here on earth. And so when you feel the presence of God here on earth, you're feeling the presence of Holy Spirit. That's how that all works, and it's awesome. So he's right here with us every moment and every day. He's the omnipresent part of God. Everywhere at all times, Holy Spirit. Jesus, one place, one time. Um, and we talk about the fact that Holy Spirit is our advantage in all things. That Holy Spirit is our edge in life. Holy Spirit is the one who brings wisdom, words of wisdom, discernment, knowledge. Um, gives us gifts as He chooses and He pleases into our lives that we can use for ministry. Holy Spirit is who brings us conviction. Who shows us the way to go on earth. He's our advantage on, on earth. That's what he does. And then we talk and learn about the spiritual gifts and each one of those and the differences between them. Pastor Josh shared an awesome message as well on Holy Spirit. And then uh, I wanted to tell you this, that um, in two or three Sundays from now, we, I shared this with our staff this morning, we're going to have a night, and it's going to be great, and we're going to tell you about it, but we're going to have it on a Sunday evening here, and we're just going to talk all about Holy Spirit even more. We're going to give you opportunities to just be empowered, to receive um, uh, just that great feeling of the Holy Spirit in your life and have take some real intentional time to have just people pray over you. So, uh, and, and we're going to talk about um, a little bit more detail on that night about something that has a lot of misconceptions in the Christian world, which is um, spiritual language, tongues, prayer, praying in tongues, the difference between spiritual uh, tongues and interpretation, and um, a heavenly prayer language. We're going to talk all about that. That night, and then we're going to pray over you. Um, anyone that would like to, that you would just receive a greater infilling of the Holy Spirit. So today, on that note, we are going to be talking, if you had to give this message um, a title, we would call this message, Be Filled. Everyone say, Be Filled. Be Filled. Be filled. So, this for a second. One of my, I'm trying to think if it's my first or second or third favorite holiday. First favorite holiday is what? Christmas. Christmas, right? Is there anyone that Christmas is not your favorite holiday? Okay, shout some out. Thanks, you. Thanks, you. Okay, yes, that's where I was at, too. You know, what about, what about you? Christmas. Well, okay, so you, but you raised your hand for Christmas, wasn't your? Maybe not. James, I've learned from you. I'm not going to say any. <laughs> James, the other day, told me, he goes, now, when you call on people, Pastor Jason, you got to be nice, so... Uh, I am being nice. James, you're, you push the gong button, right, if I get off track. Wait, so who else is, Christmas is not your favorite? What's your favorite? Which, East, okay, that, that's good. So another holy holiday, right? As opposed to John who just says, I just want turkey, right? I, but I was with John. I was with John. I'm like, it's, it's Thanksgiving or it's Christmas. I love them both. I love, I love them Here's the deal, right? So on Thanksgiving, you go up to the table and you... You know, if you're so blessed to be able to sit at a table and, and you eat a lot of food, right? Most people do it that way. And about, you know, 10 minutes after you start, 15 or maybe 20 if you're real diehard, you push back from that table, you hold your hands on your stomach, and you say something to the effect of what? I will never eat again. <laughs> and, but you're a filthy liar because 20 minutes later, <laughs> that's right, you're back at it. You know, you know getting that, you know, for me, it's the pumpkin pie. At any rate. So we, we, we get filled. And, and think about this. On earth, in the same way, we as people are intended to be filled. But not, I'm not talking about our stomach. But we're intended to be filled with something. Everybody in this room is filled. Now, a lot of people say, I feel like in life. Right? And it's because of this. It's because they're filling themselves with the wrong thing. So I'm going to start an illustration with you this morning. But, you know, we, we, we have our life here, right? And, and even, I'll, I'll just say Christian, some water in it. But we, we get filled with certain things, right? So we get filled, we try to fill our life with relationships. And how, how does that fill? Well, it's good as long as the relationship is good. You know, we all, Nancy and I have, uh, have overseen about 100 weddings, presided over them. And it's, it's a real honor, but one of the things that we always tell those couples is, don't look to that person to fill all your needs. 
because you're setting yourself up for a really bad marriage because they can't fill all your needs. God can fill all our needs according to what? His riches and his glory. But we say, so some of us say, my spouse should fill my need, but are, are you filled, right? Doesn't fill your needs. Some of us, you know, my career, that's a white ball. I had Nina get these from me. She had to crawl around the basement finding all the ping pong balls that we lost this morning. Career, um, hobbies, all of these different things. And they f- we try to fill our life with them, but the problem is we're never, ever, ever filled. We feel empty, but we're filling our life constantly, continuously with these things, but they never, ever do what they promise to do. We fill our lives, but we never feel full. We're, we're full of something, but we never feel full. A lot of us fill up with Netflix, right, to top off that thing, right? If I can just keep a stream of media coming into me or sports or whatever. But Apostle Paul, in the book of Ephesians chapter, four, or chapter 5, he wanted to teach those folks about what it meant to be filled. So think about Apostle Paul for a second. He's a Pharisee of Pharisees. In my quiet time, I, I'm, I read this old one-year Bible that for the last 28 years I've had this one-year Bible and I keep thinking I need to read that. And then I start in Genesis around, <laughs> and by January 3rd I'm out of it and I just go back to my regular devotional reading, right? But I've been reading through this and right now I'm reading about when he stood in front of Festus and Felix, this very highly intelligent Apostle Paul who was um, the Pharisee of Pharisees. He knew the word more than anybody. And he's in, in front of the, these rulers, and he appealed to Caesar, and he's making these great arguments. This was an incredibly intelligent man that was now in prison, had been in prison for two years. And when he wrote the book of Ephesians, Paul, this true academic and in, old, incredibly smartest guy in our room for, by, by far, this intelligent man begins to teach people from a jail cell The Ephesians, where he had gone, he's at the end of his third missionary journey. He'd been to the Ephesians. He'd planted that ministry there. And he said, I want to tell them something about how they should live their life that's really, really simple. And so I want you to look with me this morning at Ephesians 5, 15 through 20-ish. And we're looking through, we're looking at an obscure Bible version, the Easy Readers version. I didn't even know they had this version. But uh, it's, it's almost like the King James, it's just easier, all right? Um, chew on that for a while. All right, so look at this verse with me. It says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. So he's writing to friends. He knew these people. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly. But understand what the Lord wants you to do. Now listen to this. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone say, be filled. If you look at the NKJV version of that, it says, do not be drunk with wine that leads to dissipation. If you look at other versions, it'll say that it will lead to disaster. It will destroy your life. The whole idea is if you drink, if you fill yourself with... (laughs) wine or alcohol, you're going to ruin your life. But Paul did recognize that you need to be filled with something. And he knew the heart of man and the condition of man's life that we want to be filled. Everyone wants to be full, to feel full inside. Don't you want that? I want that. And he recognized that they all want it. So he said, I'm going to give you a prescription of how to do that. So he uses this um, incredible intelligence to do something that was so really base by comparing being filled with the Holy Spirit by, with being filled with wine or strong drink. So pull up that picture for me, if you would. I don't know what's in that. <laughs> and that's not from my house, okay? I'm just telling you right now. Um, I, I asked Andrew this morning, could you find some? I, I thought about going to Kroger and getting a bottle of vodka and bringing it in here, but I thought... I don't know if Pastor Jason should be buying vodka from Kroger up the road at 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning. So I, I opted for the picture. Yeah, I'm very holy, so that's... Um, so when you look at this, let's just assume that that looks like bourbon or whiskey, all right? What do we call all categories of strong drink? Can you think of what they're called? We call them, what are they? Spirits. Spirits. We call them spirits. When you go to a liquor or bar, 
or liquor or a store, and uh, if you go to a store to buy liquor, <laughs> sounds like I've been drinking some, <laughs> or to a bar and get some vodka or some whiskey or uh, one of those strong drinks, they will say spirits. We sell spirits here. You can tell a bar because it'll say great food, great fun, great spirits. It's a big thing that bars will do. So let me ask you guys a question and, and look at this picture as we do this. If you drink that entire decanter of spirits, of whiskey, what will it do to you? You... <laughs> Yeah, you would get that. Such a wise congregation, right? <laughs> You're like, does the message start soon? <laughs> it's going to change you, isn't it? It's going to change you. After you drink some of this stuff, you are going to seem very different. And, and Paul used this comparison of a drunk person to being filled with the Holy Spirit. And what I want you to get this morning is this. Because remember, we're going to go into... Um, in, in a few weeks, we're going to have a Sunday night encounter Jesus, and we're going to talk all about this and give you opportunity to pray and just receive um, uh, just a, I, I just call it a greater filling of the Holy Spirit, and we'll talk more about that at, on that night. But um, Holy Spirit, just like drinking that natural spirit, will change you. When you fill yourself with the Holy Spirit, which Paul just told us to do, and bear in mind this, when he said, do not be drunk on wine that leads to dissipation or that will ruin your life, easy reader version, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. Did you know that that is not a suggestion? That's not Paul saying, hey, here's a good idea, but it's a command. And so we will fill our lives, and Paul is commanding them, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So he's going to change you when you fill yourself with the Holy Spirit, just like if you fill yourself with that stuff, and you can keep that up there for a while, all right? It's gonna change you, and Holy Spirit will change you in three basic ways when you are filled with him. And if you're taking notes, you can just write these down. They're very, very simple points this morning. The Holy Spirit will change the way you walk. Holy Spirit will change the way you walk. That you walk. Now think about this. When you drink, go ahead and put that bottle picture back up again, the decanter. When you drink that, if you drank all of that, or even some of that, it's going to change the way you walk. Now, um, Brian uh, McCall, I, I, the reason I talk about Brian all the time is because I wish I was a policeman. I really, I really do. It's just he, he went through with the childhood dream and I didn't, right? <laughs> But I'm a pastor, so that's good too, all right? I like that too. Um, but Brian, when you have somebody that you pull over, and Brian McCall still, to our best of understanding, has the, the record. This really feel, it makes me, honestly, dude, this makes me feel very safe. I love when guys like this get a badge. But he ha hold, currently holds the record in McLean County, we think, of the most DUI arrests in one year, 70 79 DUI arrests. So, like, he can smell alcohol on someone's breath coming from their car, like three traffic stops away. <laughs> He's like a shark, but the good kind, right? <laughs> and he pulls people over. Now, when he pulls them over, I've never done this, and I've never been pulled over for this, Brian, and I, I never want to see your lights behind me, okay? But you put them on a straight line, and you tell this person that's intoxicated, you say, walk a straight line, right? And so they do this kind of thing, and then they walk straight over it, right, Brian? No problem? Absolutely, right? No, they kind of find their own path to walk. And I, I don't want to mock drunkenness today, all right? But I do want to talk honestly about it. So they kind of swagger and, you know, do this thing, right? And something like I did before I got saved and gave my life to Jesus. But they don't walk a straight line. They look different. They walk differently. They don't walk a straight line. You don't walk the same when you're sober as you do when you drank that. And in the same way as a Christian, what Paul is trying to do is he's saying, in the same way, when you fill up with the Spirit, your walk will be different. But instead of that swagger of someone that's not filled and you're going from this direction to that direction in life and you're bopping around and you're doing what 
James talked about, uh, talks about when God tells you a direction to go, but you ask him for wisdom, but you don't go it. So you're tossed and turned. Think about this. God, you, where should I go? How should I do this? He gives you direction in life. Don't do this or do that or get out of that relationship or stop hating or give up this, whatever it is he tells you to do, but you're tossed and turned like the waves of the sea, like that. But when you're filled with Holy Spirit, your walk becomes very straight and very strong. Think about it. Have you ever been around someone who's continually filled with the Holy Spirit? Think about that for a second. Do you, do you know somebody in your life where when they walk into the room, they just carry a presence with them? There's just a peace. There's a lady named Nancy Schneider. You know who I'm talking about. You were thinking about her, weren't you? Nancy Schneider, um, a um, dis, dis, uh, disciple of Nancy, of Angie, of Luke, of others and some others in this room. A great saint of God. And there was something about, and she was constantly filled with the Holy Spirit, and she succumbed to illness later in her 80s. She started a college ministry when she was in her 60s, retired, hundreds of college students coming to this thing. But there was something about when she'd walk in the room, just the presence, and it was because she was constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you're constantly filled, it pours out of you. The Bible says, I've shared this verse before, but the Bible says when you live in a life where you're constantly filled with the Holy Spirit, your walk is going to be different, and it says out of you will flow rivers of living water. That's God's call, not just for Nancy Schneider, but for every believer in this room, that you would overflow and your walk would be different. They literally have a jump in their step. They have a joy. They have a confidence. They seem to know where to go. They just know what to do in different situations, you know? And if they don't know, they're not all crazy-minded, like, what am I going to do? But they're very peaceful about it, knowing that God is in control, and he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. There's a confidence in the Lord, because Holy Spirit is guiding them into all truth, and they're not afraid. They're not afraid. Nancy and I um, um, had the privilege, it was really cool, we, about... Two, three months ago, we went to IHOP. We got invited by a friend of ours to go to IHOP. And, and Nancy and I, in that whole realm of IHOP, not like the pancake place. And <laughs> some of you are like, great, invite me. You know, I'll take the super stack with the little smiley face and the blueberry eyes. You know, we went to, it's called the International House of Prayer. And we went there in Kansas City. There's a leader named Mike Bickle, another guy named Daniel Lim. And we had a friend of ours who spoke here once, Patricia Bootsman. She said, hey, I'm going over there. And I'd, I'm meeting with these people, and I'd love for you to meet them. And so we went into this room. And there's Mike Bickle, and Nancy, I'm just kind of, you know, hiding over in the corner, hoping, you know, I can get a selfie of myself. <laughs> you know, it's me and Mike, we're like best friends. No, we're not. Um, but here's what, what we thought about as we sat in that room. And by the way, your pastor didn't make himself look like a total idiot in that room. <laughs> we sat and we, we were amazed at how these guys who have such targets on their back were just at perfect peace and not afraid, and not fearful, and leading this huge ministry, but just calm. And there was something about their walk that was different. 20 years of leading 24 hours of prayer, seven days a week, and these guys didn't look even a little bit stressed, not one bit. And you could tell that they had been drinking the right stuff at the right bar. But it wasn't, oh shoot, he took down my picture. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't that stuff, but it was Holy Spirit. They had gotten their drinks. If you guys can just allow me this analogy, they got their drinks from the right bartender, right. with the right bartender, with the right drink. When you're filled with things of this world, you will walk around. I wrote this this morning. You will, when you're filled with things of this world, the things that I just shared, right? You try to fill up with some good things. You try and fill up with some, some bad things, right? Whatever it is, it'll fill you up. When you're filled with that, you will walk crooked and cursed. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, your walk will be correct and with Christ. That's what God has for you. Your walk will be different. Okay, so number two. Holy Spirit changes the way you walk. Holy Spirit changes the way you talk. Have you ever listened to a drunk person talk? Have you? Sometimes you need to have an interpreter present because you don't... You don't know exactly what they're saying, and there's a slurring, and there's a, a sloshing, and a slushing of, of words, and they, they, uh, 
they, they just talk different. Um, you know, it's interesting. I remember when I was in um, high school, I, I was at a party I shouldn't have been at my junior year. Again, pre, pre-save Jason. And there was this big, huge guy that was getting in the face of a, a couple people. And this little, I think he was a, one of our football players. And there was this five foot nothing little girl who had been drinking and she gets up in this guy's face like she's going to take him out. Sometimes drunk people do very dumb things. But she's talking about um, like she has courage, but it's kind of like this, you know. um, The Bible talks about how many have a form of godliness, but there's no power there within. She didn't have what it took to line up to what she was saying to this big old guy. And thank goodness his mama taught him he never hit a girl, right? But here's the thing. That's fake courage. It's false courage. It's not real. But when you have the talk of Jesus, when you're filled with Holy Spirit, then you can be David and walk up to a nine or ten foot Philistine and look at him square in the eye and say, you'll not talk any longer and blast from the name of the Lord my God. Today I'm going to cut off your head. And you know what? He had Holy Spirit inside him able to cash the check that he was writing in front of that Philistine, and he did. One smooth stone, bam, because he was filled with the right spirit. When you drink this stuff, what Paul is saying is, you're going you're gonna to fill yourself with something that, that will promise, and this is, not a, this is not actually a message on drinking, but I, I'm tempted to half make it that. <laughs> no, I won't do that. <laughs> we don't have time. Real courage. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have real courage that God will back up with all the armies and the hosts of heaven. So our speech should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, here's a really cool thing. The word, um, be filled with the Holy Spirit, do not be drunk on wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know that, what that word filled means in the Greek? It means to be utterly dominated. Now think about that for a second. You're saying, I want to be utterly dominated by the Holy Spirit in every single way. Holy Spirit, I want you to dominate everything in my life. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to dominate your life with some of this stuff. But let's take these back out. You know what the enemy wants to dominate your life with? Shame. Foolhardiness. Lust. Anger. Hatred. Unforgiveness. And a lot of Christians will fill themselves with that. And they feel okay about it because they've got a measure of Holy Spirit living with them. They're born again, but they're, but they're not satisfied to be filled. They, they allow these things to be in your life. And here's the problem. These two things don't mix. They don't go together. They, they'll never be apart. God is always going to bubble these things up to the top of your life. When you've got Holy Spirit in you, all this stuff's going to come to the top. And he's going to say, I want to skim this off like a refining fire. The two can't coexist. The more you fill yourself with Holy Spirit, the more this junk is going to come to the top and God's going to say, I have no room for these things in your life. They're taking up the place that I want to fill. Your talk will change. Nancy and I um, had a, uh, uh, a meeting with some Christians just the other day and it was really hard. We went in there, it was wanting to do some reconciliation and um, and we walked in, and the words that were spoken over us were just hate-filled. And I thought, boy, I thought, I, was, I thought we were here to reconcile. And the very first thing that was told to me is, I don't want to reconcile with you. I will not reconcile with you. I refuse to. And I don't want to do life with you. And by the way, let me tell you, you're a coward. This was what was spoken over Nancy and I. So I took the hand of my wife, Nancy, And I said, and I looked at these folks, and I said, you know what? I do love you, but it doesn't really feel like you're interested in reconciling (laughs) because your talk is not the talk of my father. But the, the words you're speaking are not just hard words that we need to say, and sometimes we need to hear some words, right? Sometimes we need to deal with the truth in love. But you were not, as a believer, created to endure cursing. The Bible says, can cursing and blessing come out of the same mouth? 
And so I took the hand of my wife. I said, I, it, crazy, it doesn't feel like you really want to reconcile right now. So if you ever want to do that, I would love to have that conversation. I took my wife's hand, we walked away. We need to learn that the words of our Father are words of grace, peace, and hope, not of cursing. When you are a true, when you're truly walking with Jesus, he's going to take the cursing out of your mouth and fill it with blessing as we fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. You, you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak words of hate, or revenge. It doesn't work that way. Jesus died so we wouldn't have to do that. Your speech will start changing when you start to love and bless those who speak evil of you. That's what happens when you're filled with Holy Spirit. Did you know that you can't hate a brother and love God at the same time? You can't do it. It's not, it's not possible. It's not the way we were created. So we need to change. I also wrote this down this morning, actually, downstairs. I told Pastor Clark I got a couple more thoughts I got to write down. But no, not just do we change the way the Holy Spirit changed the way we talk to others, but Holy Spirit wants to change the way we talk to ourselves. And I'm not talking about the old Saturday Night Live <laughs> skit where Michael Jordan looks in the mirror and says, some of you remember this, some of you old people like me, right? <laughs> where Michael Jordan, you guys, everyone remember Michael Jordan? <laughs> you know, he has this counselor and the counselor says, Michael, I want you to look in, in, the, in the mirror and I want to speak to yourself. Michael says, okay. Because Michael, I know, Michael Jordan, famous basketball player, I know that you're insecure, aren't you, Michael? Oh, yes, I am. So look in the mirror and speak this, Michael. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it, people like me. All right? So that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking, <laughs> but I'm talking about he wants your thoughts towards yourself not to be dominated anymore by self-abuse or cursing yourself or shame or doubt or fear. I know people that, that, and I understand this because I've done that, people that made a bad stock market decision or just didn't buy in when they could have or didn't you know, buy Dogecoin or doggy coin because they didn't even know how to say it right, right? And so all this money that they lost, you fool, you idiot, you could have blessed your family. You're such a foolish person. Self-hatred. Oh, all I ever do is lust, and I, I'm, I'm evil, I'm evil. God is saying, maybe those thoughts are evil, but you just give them to me, and you don't curse yourself with that identity. No, I'm a child of God. I'm a, I'm a son or daughter of a risen king. God says, don't call any man raka. You know what that means? Don't call any man an idiot. You know where you start with that? Right here. Stop calling yourself a fool. Because if you do those things, if you fill yourself with something other than Holy Spirit, just like Paul said, it will ruin your life. It will ruin your life. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone say, be filled. Let's just say, God, dominate my life with your thoughts and your influence. All right, last thing is this. The Holy Spirit changes the way we walk, changes the way we talk. He also changes the way we act. Changes the way we act. Paul, um, who was in his prison cell when he was writing this stuff, had previously had opportunity to walk with some of the original disciples, right? Spend time with them and learn about the things that Jesus did and that, um, that their Savior personally had done. And he knows stories that aren't in the Bible, stuff that we've never read or heard or seen because there was so much more than what we just read. But Holy Spirit wants to change the way you act. And I think it's interesting that there's a book in the Bible called the book of Acts. And I'm sure that Paul had been instructed on or told about really cool stuff that happened in, in all through the book of Acts, but in Acts chapter 2. And I want to I just remember this right now. So Acts chapter 2, remember that chapter? Great chapter of the Bible where Holy Spirit, you know, Jesus says to 500 at the ascension, I want you to go and um, wait and um, go tarry in Jerusalem until the comforter comes, the Holy Spirit. And you know what those guys needed right then? They needed comfort. Did you know that when you fill yourself with Holy Spirit, you know what he brings? Comfort. 
He brings peace. He's the prince of peace. He brings counsel. He's the wonderful counselor. He's a holy God. He's mighty. So these are all those attributes, and they needed to be filled with that stuff. And Jesus, who's leaving, and they're upset. They're hurting because Jesus is leaving. These are real people. They were hurting. All of their hopes are going up to heaven in a cloud, and they just stared forever till he was gone. And he said, 500 of them, you need this great comforter. And he chose that word, that attribute of the Holy Spirit, because that's what they needed at that moment was that attribute of the Holy Spirit. They need to be filled with his comfort. And so out of those 500, 380, for whatever reason, said, I got other things to do. Or they couldn't make the journey. We don't know why. But 120 went back. And they went to the upper room in Jerusalem. They rented a, a party room, okay, a, a hotel conference room. And they tarried and they waited. And it said that they just prayed. And I think, what, what were they praying for? I think they were praying for comfort. Comfort, please come, because I don't know what my future looks like anymore. I don't know the way to go. I, all my hopes that I had are completely undone and rewritten. I don't know what life ahead is going to look like. And, and people don't like me anymore, and I left, left everything. I left my Fisher stuff. I, I left my job. I left my parents. I left it all. I need some comfort. And they tarried in Jerusalem, and it said that the Holy Spirit came, and tongues of fire appeared on their head, and the sound of a mighty rushing wind came in, and it said that all of them were filled, and they spoke with other tongues, and they spilled out into the streets. They, I, why did they spill out? Probably some of them were like, it's getting crazy in here. Cool, but crazy. Some of them probably just were excited. I, we don't know why, but they spilled out into the streets, and then they started to speak. And what did they speak? They didn't speak Hebrew, and they didn't speak Aramaic. You know what they spoke? Syrian. They spoke Cretan. They spoke other languages of that time. And Jerusalem at that time was filled, because it was the Feast of Pentecost, it was, that, that city was filled with people from all different nations. And so there were many language groups that were, that were in that place at that time. And then they, they, they began to speak in these. And some people that understood those uh, as their natural tongues said, listen to these people, they're speaking the glories of God in all our native tongues. And some of them, they didn't know what tongue they were talking in because it wasn't their native tongue. And they said, no, 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 that's not what's going on. These people are drunk. But Peter said, no, we're not drunk. It's only nine in the morning. Now, they probably look tired. They've been up all night long, right? But they're excited. And they begin to speak. And you know what happened is that Holy Spirit began in the book of Acts to change the way these people acted. Because all of a sudden, a boldness came on them. And people were amazed at what they were seeing. And they were saying this. I believe some of them probably said this. You know what? We, the people going into that upper room are not the same as the people that are coming out of that upper room. Because did they have Jesus in them? Well, of course, they walked with him all those days. But something had transpired in their life that they were filled in a new way, and they came out acting different. Peter demonstrated it when in front of 3,000 people that we know, for there are probably more, stood up. I don't know how they did it. I'm waiting for that chosen episode to come out so I can learn how it actually happened, right? By the way, season finale tonight. It's a little, I didn't get paid for that announcement. Um, and so he went out, and Peter, who just days earlier had hidden from and, and cursed when a, when a um, little servant girl said, you're one of them, you're a Galilean, and he cursed and said, no, I'm not. I don't know what you're talking about. That same guy that said, Jesus, I'll go with you to the cross, but yet hid the entire time, stood up in front of 3,000 people, called the very people that had just hung Jesus on the cross uh, vipers, basically, cursed them for what they had done, but then yet proclaimed to them the hope of Jesus in boldness. They began to act differently. Everyone say, be filled. When you're filled, you are changed. Pastor Josh, if you want to come up. Nancy, I'm going to have you pray here in just a minute. Um, I want to ask you guys a question this morning. I can do a little illustration. I've done a version of this illustration before, and I, I thought about this when I was driving here, so I asked Nina to get me some jars and stuff like that, and I always make a mess when I do this. Variation on a theme here, so stick with me. Anyone ever have a grandma that made you wear a bag as a raincoat 
at Six Flags because you forgot your raincoat, the poncho, and because you're embarrassed, because you didn't want to wear a poncho, so grandma made you wear a bag. Does, any, does anyone have that childhood trauma like I do? Okay, thank you. All right, I don't know why I thought about that. Nancy is going to correct me on that a little later. <laughs> um, you got to be filled. You got to be filled. And you got to examine your life. And so I'm going to ask you, it's a command. Do not be drunk on wine. You know what? Let's take it this way. Don't be drunk on things of the world. Things here that will satisfy today. You know, it's interesting about that bottle because we respect that bottle. I know some of you are like, where are you going with this? We respect that bottle. Why? We respect that bottle because if you go to a bar and you say, could I have some whiskey? I'm not recommending this, by the way, okay? But if you say, I'd like some whiskey, they're not going to say, okay, here's a bottle, a decanter, a fifth, as they say, and you're just going to start slugging out of it. That's not how it works. You're going to go in there, and they're going to give you what? A shot. Give you a little shot. And you'll drink that, and then um, if that's the thing that you do, I don't recommend it. And um, then he'll say, or she'll say, let me know if you want some more. And then they'll give you another one little shot. And then as you begin to be changed, because that will change you in a bad way, okay, they'll eventually say, I'm cutting you off. If you're a good bartender, I'm cutting you off. I'm not going to give you any more. Did you know we do that as Christians with the Holy Spirit? I just want a little bit. Because God the Father, I, you know, he's big enough that I, you know, I don't totally understand all that anyway. And, and he's a little less tangible because he's just, he's in heaven. And Jesus, I love Jesus because Jesus is my friend, right? He's my Lord, but he's my friend because he said in the scriptures, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends, right? Holy Spirit, he's a little bit scary because he's got gifts that I don't totally understand. And I went to this one meeting one time and something kind of weird happened. And so just give me a little shout of the Holy Spirit. But it's the total different way. We're not supposed to touch that stuff, I believe. All right, just me. I'll do a sermon on that sometime. But, um, but that stuff, even the world knows you take that in shots. But what Jesus is saying, God is saying, he's saying, be filled. Drink the whole bottle of Holy Spirit and then ask for more. That's what, that's what God teaches. Be constantly filled. When, when the word says be filled, it means be dominated by. And it also means be constantly filled. Not just filled once, but constantly filled with the Holy Spirit. And so we take our lives, and, and I ask you, what are you filling your life with? Some good stuff. Bible study? Um, I don't know. Some, help me out here, guys. Prayer, which is good. You've got to do that. Um, so we got some of the good stuff. Here's the white ball. So this is all the good stuff, right? All that stuff. But then we, we hang on to our secret life. Of, and I fill myself with not bad stuff, um, chasing after money a little bit, because I want to take care of my family and... You know, um, my hobbies, working out, not working out, <laughs> promising that you'll work out, <laughs> and putting your Kathy Rigby gazelle exerciser out on the side of the road, right? I saw one of those once. And we fill our life with good things, and then we, we, we cap it with some shame, some doubt, some fear, and we've got all this stuff. And, and some of this God is saying, that's okay, but it's not going to bring you hope, right? And so God is saying... I can't coexist with all this. You've got to be these, I'm sorry about this, trustees. I'm so sorry about this. But this is what I want to do. I want you to be constantly filled here. And when you, I'm going to have to help myself out a little bit. And all that stuff's going to go, but you know what's going to happen? You're going to start splashing and splittering all over the place because you are so filled with the Holy Spirit that the people that laid the carpet are really upset with me right now. CABC vets, forgive me. Um, it's mostly on this. Yeah, I'll stay away from the outlets. I'm losing you right now, aren't I? <laughs> but can I tell you what? When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you really don't care what people think anymore. Just like someone that's drunk on that stuff, which I don't recommend, because God says through Paul, don't be drunk on wine, which will ruin your life. But you know what? Someone that drinks that stuff, they don't care what you think. 
they stumble around and they do whatever that spirit tells them to do. Did you know when you're really filled with the Holy Spirit and you're constantly filled and that's your goal is, you know, in the end, you don't really, you love people because your talk has changed. You're doing right things because your walk has changed. But because you act, you act differently, you really don't care anymore that people don't like that you don't fit in their perfect box or their perfect pronouns or their perfect um, wokeness. Or, your, or let's throw it back on the church, your perfect Sunday morning Christian because you just want to please Jesus and live for him. Amen. Nancy, would you come up and just close us in prayer? There's a microphone right next to Nina. And by the way, I think most of it's contained here. Thank you, Ray Sanders, for helping me clean it up later. Or Elliot. Let's just stand to our feet. I, I got the privilege of reading this message before. I get to read, hear the message twice most Sundays because I happen to be Jason's editor, but I thought, man, this is good. This is so good. It was such a good message for me. Um, you know, and I thought of something this weekend. Uh, Jason and I went out to eat, and we went to Biagi's, and I ordered the, um, oh, what was it, the white chocolate bread pudding something, or yeah. something. Oh, it's it good. was good, and it was sugary. And, you know, when you, eat, when you eat that much sugar, you instantly have a high. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, that was so much sugar. Anybody have that white chocolate stuff at Biagi's, you know what I'm talking about? Nobody's had that. You need to order that. But I will warn you. So I, so I had that, uh, that dessert. And I mean, probably like halfway through, I was starting to feel a little sick to my stomach, and it was like, woo, too much sugar all at once. And, and Jason had ordered the beet salad. And I, I, halfway through, I looked over, and I was like, oh, I need some of that beet salad. So I do that a lot, don't I, Jason? I sort of order something and then end up eating. She what orders what she wants. And then I eat And it. I order what but, she but wants. But I, I guess I say this. <laughs> I say this right now. Just look around for a minute. Look, look, at, look at your family right now. Look at the church family. I know we don't look around a lot. We sit in our, our chairs. Look around around you. This, it's so good to be a part of a family, isn't it? A church family. I'm so blessed by you guys. I'm so blessed by the church family. And sometimes I think we come in and um, we might have been filled on the white chocolate pudding like I was. But the person next to you might be, have had the beet salad and the really the good stuff. But that's why we have each other. You know, I, I was thinking what Josh said, you know, a lot of people aren't coming back to church because they're like, we can get this at home. You know, I can listen to a message on home. You cannot get what we have right here at home. Can I tell you that? So maybe even some of you are starting to think about like, man, maybe I could have stayed in my pajamas today and stayed at home. And there was a little temptation when it's cloudy outside. But I want to tell you, you can't sit next to each other at home. And there's something that your neighbor has that you don't have right now, possibly. Like you might need the beet salad this morning because you filled up too much on the white chocolate pudding, which I did. And so I just want to, just for a few, I don't want to prolong it, but I do, I kind of want to like, and I know they use me as a cheerleader because I really feel it inside. I feel like, oh, don't leave, don't leave if you're kind of sick to your stomach and you didn't quite get filled this morning because this is a good place to get filled. And so if we could just kind of open this up as, as Josh closes, I just want to, not just me, just anybody that wants to pray over someone or don't leave this place if you're like, you know, I've been filling up maybe for a long time on whether it be the whiskey bottle or the Netflix or whatever it is or the work or the whatever, but I'm feeling a little full but sick to my stomach. We're all filled with something, but you might be a little sick to your stomach. And so maybe you just need to repent this morning. Like, God, I've been filling up on the wrong things, and I'm going to come up to this altar and just re repent of being filled with the wrong thing. And then maybe we'd be brave enough to raise your hand and someone around you could just agree with you because there's a lot of there's a lot of pastors in our midst you know that there's a lot of gifts in this body I mean unbelievable I think I just have the privilege of knowing you guys all so well that I'm like wow there is some mighties in this room and you might have something somebody right next to you needs and so maybe turn to your neighbor and ask him what are you filled with just ask him what are you filled with right now because I believe if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit to overflowing I don't want you guys to leave this morning without being filled right? I want you guys to walk out so that we can do this. So let's, let's pray. Let's do this right now. We're going to pray. You can join hands with the person next to you and just close your eyes and agree with them. In fact, before we even do that, just, just be bold. We're a family. 
Do you need some extra prayer this morning? Just raise your hand. Everybody's eyes open, looking around. Just lift your hand. Do you need some extra prayer? Look around you. Just maybe you're feeling like kind of dry or you just feel like, man, I need someone to agree with me on something. I know there's more people than that. Raise your hands. Don't be shy. This is a place to get prayer. Anybody else? Just lift your hand high. Just say, you know, I'd love someone to agree with me right around me. Just if you need any kind of healing, you got something coming up, look around. Keep your hand lifted. Keep that hand up there. Keep lifting your hand. Look around you. And just if you're around that person, pray with them, would you? Just lay hands on the person that raised their hand. And then if you want to come up here and just, and just pray, then do that. But I'm going to, in, a, in corporate worship right now, we're going to close in prayer. But I want you to gather around the people that lifted their hands. There was somebody over here, a couple people over here, someone over here. And just gather around them come up and get around them and pray with them and then we're going to corporately agree together okay so let's just bow our heads and pray with me hallelujah lord we just pray in agreement just agree with me right now out loud just begin to say yes lord we agree we are agreeing together as a family of god we are asking jesus Holy Spirit, that you would fill us up to overflowing. Forgive us of where we've been filled of other things. Forgive us where we've allowed things like doubt and discouragement and hopelessness, God. And we've been filled of all the, the lust of life and the lust of this world. We just repent of that right now in Jesus' name. And we make room for you, Holy Spirit. Can you say that right now? I make room for you, Holy Spirit. Just fill us up to overflowing. Fill us up right now. We just lift our hands and say, fill us up, Holy Spirit. Fill us up to overflowing. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you commanded us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Every doubt, every discouragement, every hopelessness we put aside. And we ask Jesus that you would fill us right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. It's rewriting my history. Let's just close this morning with this. It covers me destiny and it's making all things right the precious blood of Christ it's rewriting my history Holy Spirit come and it covers me with destiny it's hope and there's comfort it's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history Washing us clean It covers me with dust Holy Spirit fill us up and It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Speaks a better word Yes, it does so Holy Spirit, fill us as we go. May we continually, Lord, pour more of ourselves out so that you can pour more of yourself in. God, we lay everything at your feet. And we love you. And God, may we go in the name of Jesus, Lord, the light of the world. So Lord, thank you for each person here. We love you. Draw us close to you. We ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Have a great week. Thanks for being with us this morning here at Journey. It's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ speaks a better word. We are spirit.